Hello everyone. One question. Do you like the avocado on toast or do you keep it basic and delicious with just the right amount of chips? Avocados have become a staple in many dishes, whether eaten in a combination with other foods or enjoyed alone, plain and simple. Although avocados have recently become more popular, they have in fact been around for many, many generations. Many believe that the avocado is a vegetable, but in fact it is a fruit belonging to the tree to the large shape family. The family in general includes other best known species which produce other cooking goods such as bay leaves and uh, cinnamon. But getting back to the avocado, in Mexico where its origins began, it is better known as the aguacate, derived from the Aztec word aguacatle. Cultivated in Mexico, the avocado is thought to have first been discovered in South Central Mexico where between the years 7,000 and 5,000 BC, rather than by some hipsters at Whole Foods in 2011. It is believed to have contained mystical powers by the Aztecs and was thought of as a symbol of love and fertility due to its lack of ability to self-pollinate and needing other trees nearby to grow and produce. With that said, we have established that the avocado originated, originated somewhere in South Central Mexico. But just how did it get to the U.S.? It is thought that the Spanish conquistadors first managed to bring the avocado across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1696, Sir Hans Sloan was credited with the first English language use of the word avocado. Uh, it wasn't until uh, Judge R.B. Ord in 1871 that the avocado was imported to Santa Barbara with trees that were imported from Mexico. Since then, we can now find over 500 different types of cultivated varieties, although they all seem to have derived from Guatemalan, Mexican, or West Indian origin. Some well-known avocados are the coquette, which consists of a, a glossy skin and comes from Florida. The lula is a summertime peaking avocado that contains more water than natural oils compared to the other avocados. The reed can be the size of a softball and is only available during summer. It's lighter in flavor and has skin that remains green in color even after it ripens, unlike the other types. The other one is the fuerte, which means strong in Spanish. This avocado um, it has an oily texture. The has is the most popular as it is available year round. It is the one we see more often. It consists of a buttery nutty flavor and it's very cool in shape. Um, of course, these are just a few of the many delicious uh, varieties uh, available to us. But avocados are not just good. They're also good for us. They contain many vitamins and are good for our health. Avocado contains healthy fats and are a great source of folate, potassium, vitamin C, K, and vitamin E. The healthy fats contained in avocados are known as monosaturated fats. These are good for your heart and hold anti-inflammatory properties. Consuming them can also contribute to reabsorption of fat-soluble nutrients. Aside from vitamins, antioxidants can also be obtained through their consumption. These antioxidants are thought to help with um, age-related disorders, including those that affect the eyes, along with neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's. Now that we have a bit of background on the avocado, we can get to my favorite part. We enjoy eating avocados. We can eat it with any type of meal. As a matter of fact, I have also introduced it to my 10-month-old son. Our favorite way of having avocado is by making guacamole. Uh, guacamole is a staple dish to accompany uh, every uh, barbecue. It is a traditional dish with very basic ingredients. Um, I use a molcajete to mix my ingredients. The molcajete can be described as a type of mortar and pesto and are a staple in many Latin kitchens. It is often known as a prehistoric blender. To make guacamole, we first gather our basic ingredients, which include tomatoes, onions, cilantro, serrano chile, and my secret ingredient, meat leaves, of course your favorite avocado. The mint leaves provide an extra touch of flavor and it's optional. I sometimes add it for a little bit of extra taste. Some seasonings for the uh, guacamole can include salt, pepper, and lemon. It's all up to you. To get started, first you dice all your ingredients. Uh, tomatoes, onions, chile, cilantro, and mint leaves. You add them to the molcajete and you use a pestle to grind them. You add a bit of salt. In this step, you utilize the pestle-looking part of the molcajete. 
This part helps bring out the oils, flavors, ingredients. And it helps bring out the oil, the flavors and in the ingredients, and it's very important. Uh, you grind it so you get a paste-like consistency. Uh, once those are ground, you may cut up about two to three avocados, depending on how big they are and how much you want to make. And you keep smashing them with the pestle. After you reach the right consistency, you can add the diced tomatoes and mix into the avocado with the spoon. Do not crush the, the tomatoes. Uh, you then add your salt, lemon or pepper, whichever you like, and you're done. With these six simple, simple steps, we have now created a delicious side dish. And of course, I prefer traditional chips or simple tortillas to go along with mine. And that's the end of my presentation on how to make guacamole.